right, what is going on, everybody? So you know, we have here the Oppenheimer movie review. So let me get <laughs> let me get into this, man. So going into the theater at 7 p.m., right? And of course, I knew it was going to be three hours. So when I bought it on Fandango, um, some part makes me think I should have went at the 2 p.m. showing. But I, that was when I was recording and doing a whole bunch of other stuff, getting videos out. So then I decided, okay, I really didn't do much for the day. I'll just go see it at 7 o'clock. So when I was wide awake, knowing when I go to these theaters, man, I got a habit of just falling asleep in movie theaters, right? And I think this started within the last five years because before I've never really fell asleep in these movie theaters, bro. But the thing that gets me, and the thing is that the movie might not be boring. It might be a good action-packed movie. It's just we sit in these comfortable freaking cushion seats. And, and then it's dark as hell in there. And that just triggers just like when you normally sleep. You cut the lights off. Everything's off. You lay down. And you sleep. So I don't know. With this movie, again, I knew it was going to be three hours, right? And it's not gonna be it's not an action adventure comedy type movie. But and I knew it was World War Two aspects, you know, World War Two scenarios and it actually happened. So, um Yeah, man, just I from but from what I've seen, it was pretty good. This movie I would have to give another shot. I gotta give it another shot because <clears throat> Man, it, it's tough to explain. I don't want to crap on a movie. It, 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 it was, well, based on the box office numbers, that in Barbie, they're like top four within like the last 20 or some years, maybe ever, I don't know. But I know they was like number four behind like, uh, like Endgame and Star Wars. But I, I've... I've, I've fell asleep or numer nodded off numerous times it, it was just a dialogue um yeah i guess you can say it was born but it, it's i'm not i, I don't want to i don't want to say it was a horrible movie it wasn't horrible it was still decent from what i've seen right maybe it, to me it shouldn't have been three hours long because after of course, we know the history of World War II, right? The Japanese, um, they, they dropped the atomic bombs on Nagasaki and, Hiro and Hiroshima. So and once that happened, they, you know, they surrendered, and the war was basically over. So my thing was that, to me, well, it's, it's based on Oppenheimer. Okay, I understand it, but they could have cut it up or something, man, because after that was like a good 40 to 45 minutes in which I'm just like, man, bro. When is this going to be over with, man? But I have to put, I have to think of it in the aspect of it is what he went through, right? So, in, in that, in the, uh, when they, when they put him on trial in like 1954. Also, one thing I really didn't care for about the movie is that it kept going from, you know, 1926, you know, when he's in, in college, right? It was, it, where was he at? Uh, yeah, I had to relook at it on Wikipedia. Man went to like three colleges, and they will go from one college in 1926. Then they'll go to the conference. Then they'll go back to when he was in Germany, and then they'll go back to him in 1947. So we just kept doing a whole bunch of flip floply type stuff. So that was another thing that kind of threw me off. It's like, okay, you mentioned that you know you're in college, you're studying to be this professor, and then the next scene, this man has kids and a wife. So it's like. And this is 20 years later, so it was somewhat confusing. Again, you got to give it another shot. But in all, when I read the plot again on Wikipedia, and I had to use the bathroom, so now I missed a couple minutes. So I have to look and see what I missed. But re-looking at it on like the, the stories on, on online, Wikipedia, IMBD, the plots, like it's pretty interesting what this dude undid, man. Uh, yeah, man, just starting off in college, trying to become a, a quantum physicist, 
goes to Germany, stays there for a little bit, and comes back to America because no one in America did the quantum physics like they did in Germany. And so then you have um, certain situations in which he's meeting different people, and then you have Matt Damon. And that's another thing I say. This is a star. It, it, this got a bunch of them A-list actors in it. As you can see up here, Cillian Murphy. I first seen this guy when he played Scarecrow in the Batman Begins movie back in 2005. So, because I've seen this guy, I'm like, where did this guy, I've seen him before. I've seen him before, but then I had to look, look at his, uh, his films that he did. And I'm like, okay, I, that's what it was. And then you got Emily Blunt. We know Emily Blunt. Well, she was in, um, Jungle Cruise. She was in the, um, what was A Quiet Place 1 and 2. So, and she got some movies on her belt as well. Then, of course, Matt Damon, right? Turn this off. We got Matt Damon, who's been, of course, we you all know Matt Damon from the Bourne uh, series, right? The trilogies and whatnot. Um, and then the last one I did, the uh, last movie I did with Matt Damon, and it was Air. Great freaking movie. Um, then you got Robert Downey Jr., Iron Man himself, right? A whole bunch of movies he done did. And then Florence Poole. Poole, is that her name? So I had to look her up. And she did the move. The she played Paige. If you all into wrestling, she she played Paige's character. The Rock actually, I think he uh, produced that movie, Fighting with My Family. I think that's what it's called. So that was one of her starts, the intros into the film industry, and she killed it in this one. But yeah, going back to it, Matt Damon's character, he played a general, hires um, Oppenheimer to. Uh, to develop, to, uh, to work on the atomic bombs, because all of this is during, again, World War II. So th they, they need to develop the atomic bombs, and they try to figure out who to drop it on, right? And when I looked at it again, the plot, looking at it again, it, it mentioned that Germany, of course, Germany surrendered, right? So he's in the aspect of, oh, man, do, should we really drop it now that Germany surrendered? Because he's Jewish, so they surrender they're out of the war but they still have these bombs so then you have uh going up to that point you have him having a team you got what's called the uh, manhattan project um what was it that uh shoot that, that's like a secret that was um a secret should i say lab but just secret project that they have developed in uh what was it the los alamos in new mexico where they had to study and, and develop the bombs. So, and they they did a great job, man. He had his team there going through thin and thick and thin. Up, you know, you have issues. You got Florence Pugh's character. You know, she had like certain issues. She was going through like depressions and whatnot. He was cheating on his wife or her character. And <laughs> again, like I mentioned before, it was going back and forth, back and forth. So we get what them talking, and then we get 10 years later where they're at the conference where he's getting investigated on if he's a communist or not. And, you know, trying to see if he should get his security clearance back. And then you got Robert Downey uh, Jr.'s character. He's working with him. But then he, um, oh, my God, he, he's... um. He ends up like backfiring on him. He doesn't like him no more because Oppenheimer is talking to Albert Einstein. There's a scene in which they're outside of the college and he's talking to Albert Einstein, but Robert Downey Jr. character thinking that Oppenheimer is bad mouthing him. So then we have later on where he's like going against him and whatnot, setting up people to take him out, not off him, but like to remove him from. The, the committee and um, just just the whole aspects of this situation here with the bombs and all this political stuff. But, yeah, man, it, again, you have to give it another shot, right? Because even now I'm doing this review and there's still stuff that I, I missed out that I have to see again. But... Yeah, I'm going to just leave it at that. But the good part about the movie is that uh, 
the production was great. It was a hundred million dollar production. And you can tell too because I'm sitting in a theater and it's that they're they're showing like the particles again, like I said, quantum physics, so you can see like was like the fire, the atoms and whatnot, and you can just hear the surround sounds of just stuff happening. And that's what I did like about it. When when the bombs this is one scene in which the bombs went off. Um well there was the test bomb. But he's he at at this point he's starting to feel he's starting to um feel guilty because okay you realize you done killed like a total of close to maybe about five hundred thousand Japanese people, civilians. And remember when I mentioned that Germany surrendered, he was on the edge about it. But Truman was present at the time. Truman wanted the bombs dropped on Japan. But he, he was hesitant he was hesitant on it. So it happens. I think he wanted it set to August 15th, but then Truman had it happen on the 6th. So he just, Truman was like, man, forget it, bro. Get these bombs. Let's, you know, end this war. And he started, and Oppenheimer starts feeling guilty about it, man. So, I mean, you done killed a lot of people. That's stuff, something that you worked on. You was the head guy. Like, he was the first, he was the first uh, director of the Manhattan Project. In 1943 to 1945 so yeah man but then there was the scene in which um he meets Truman after that happens he tells Truman that paraphrasing again he, he didn't he didn't feel right about it but then Truman's looking at him like they will you did it but I pulled the plug on it no one will know that you ever did it so he's trying to say that it was my decision, but Oppenheimer's still feeling, you know, guilty. I mean, he's not he's not right with it. And you have people celebrating him. He's he's getting quoted as the father of the atomic bomb. But uh you have a, a little small pep rally in the gym. He's like seeing things, he's seeing the bombs go off, like the visions. You know, uh, he's seeing like the Japanese people, you know, the family holding on to their kid and whatnot. He's seeing their flesh being torn off their faces. Yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, and again, you have to watch it again. It, 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 it wasn't a bad movie. It's just, it was just too long, bro. But I will give it another shot. I, I will definitely give it another shot when it comes on streaming on Netflix or HBO Plus, HBO Max or whatever. I'm not going to go see it again and pay that money for it. But yeah, man, and all, I mean, just from what I've seen, it was it was pretty decent, but it was long. So if you all are going to see it, be prepared. But um, yeah, man, that's that's all I got, bro. If I hopefully I, oh, okay, this last thing. And like I mentioned, production, the one thing I did like about it was that um, when they had the test run, the, the test uh, bombs, it, it was amazing how it happened. So he's developing the bomb there on a, a, a base, like the, just an open area. And, and, oh yeah, and also they got Josh Peck in it. They had a bunch of people, and then they got actors, I don't know their names, but I know I've seen them in movies. They, they, they got the, the dad from Pet Cemetery. They got... Um, What's that guy with the glasses with the white hair? I know I've seen him in many movies. Oh my God. It was just a bunch of actors that I remember seeing. And they got Josh Peck from, from Drake and Josh. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. They got everybody in here. But um, yeah, man, so they, they did the test bomb. And this part I liked where the bomb went off. They had the countdown. It went off. And once it went off, you can just see the camera work focuses on Oppenheimer's face, but there's no sound. It's detailing like it worked. In his mind, it worked. And it's just this bright light on Oppenheimer. And then it goes to everybody else in a little bunker that they have. And it has everybody on the outside with their little goggles on. They're, 
you know, bracing themselves. Then they look, you can just see the white lights on their faces. And it's like that for maybe about two minutes. And then it goes back to Oppenheimer and then the sound of the the, side, the shock waves from the from the from the bomb hits you right there, scares the hell out of you. But that I liked. Certain parts of the movie I did like. But um, yeah, man, I, that's up to you if you all want to give it a shot. To if you all want to watch a three-hour movie, that's up to you all. But uh, from what from, but from what I've watched, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. So um. Yeah, man, hopefully you all enjoyed that review. And then, what's the next one I'll do? Uh, I didn't see the Barbie movie. That Again, everybody's raving about the Barbie movie. I might check that out. Might not. I don't know yet. But anyway, I'm out. Catch you all later.